2023 June, Pew Mathematics 2. Answer all questions. Question number one. Find f double dash of x. That means you differentiate it twice. Because you say d squared y over the x squared. So you differentiate the first time. When you differentiate, you multiply by the power, multiply by the power, and subtract one from the power. Two things, multiply by the power, and subtract one from the power. The power is three, so you multiply by three, and you subtract one from three, you get two. Three minus one gives you two. That gives you three x squared. Differentiate this next one. You multiply by the power, two times two is four, and then two minus one is one. Here it is eight x to the power one. Multiply by the power, one times eight is eight. Subtract one, one minus one is zero. So it's x to the power zero, which is just one. Five x, think of it as five x to the power zero, for power zero is one. Multiply by the power, zero times five x is zero. Differentiate the second time. 3x squared, it becomes 6x, and 4x becomes 4. And that's all for part A. Part B, solve the equation. So you make 6x plus 4 equals to 0. Plus 4 goes to the right, becomes minus 4, and you divide by 6. So you get minus 2 over 3. Concave is minimum point. So the squared y over the x squared has to be equal to 0 has to be greater than zero for it to be called a minimum point. So we substitute minus two over three, and that gives us minus six times minus two over three plus four, minus four plus four, it gives you zero, which is equal to zero. So let's see how what that shows us now. When you look at this concave, between this point and this point, and then this side is the convex. When you do it in the graphic calculator, you got minus 4.193 and one. So in between those points is when it is concave. Question number two. So we have the N term formula. So when we put n is 1, because go u1 is 35, we put n is 1. So it becomes 1 plus 1 is 2. So that gives us u2. So that's u1, put n is 1, put n is 1. So u1 is 35 plus 7 times cosine of that is 0, because it's cosine of 90 is 0. Cosine of pi over 2. Put your calculator in radians. That'll give you 0. And then minus 5 minus 1 to the power 1. That gives you plus. Minus times minus is a positive. So you get 40. You put n is equals to 2. You simplify it. When you put n is, n is equals to 2, you get 28, which will be n3, u3. And you put n equals to 3 you would get U4, which is 33. So your answer goes 33, 35, 40, 28, comes back to 33 again. So after four, it repeats, it starts repeating. So it's periodic of order four. Write down the fit one. Order four means after one, two, three, four, it starts to repeat again, the same numbers. 35, 40, 28, 33. 35, 40, 28, 33. So the fit one is 35. And the next part is find the sum. The sum is we want to get up to 25. So ended at U9, go to U25 and add all of them. You can list it out and write it down and add them up, but that will take too long in an exam. But I'm going to list it for you because I'm not in an exam. So the first four numbers, U1 to U4, 35, 40, 28, 33. 
the next four numbers, the 540, 28, 33. So we do that in that groups of four until we get to the 25th one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times four is 24. And then that last one there is 25. So if we do 25 divided by four, it gives us six remainder one. So that means we multiply by six. Six of these yellow packets. Let me put it in the packets. The six of them. That's why we add them up and times it by six. And then the last one, which starts to repeat is 35. We add 35, that gives us the answer. Or you can manually add all of them. Question number three. For 3a, we want to show, if you look at the answer and look at where we start, where we start and where we end, where we start has got locks in them and where we end has no locks. So there's a clue there. We have to remove the locks and we have to follow the rules. So to remove the locks, we can start by putting these two together. There's two separate things, one, two. When you add them, what do you do? You put them together and multiply. So we come X plus three times X plus 10. This two in front there, it goes to the front, it becomes X squared. And then what we can do is we take this to the left-hand side so that we put all the locks to the left. We have lock there, lock there. So that we're left with only two on the right-hand side. Now, when you subtract in locks, that means you divide this number and divide by that one. So you divide them, put it together, and you get that. So we take this one, two, and put them as one by dividing them. Now, this two is looking at that two there, so it becomes two squared is equal to that. Now you cross multiply. That's like two squared over one. Cross multiply, you get this linear form. Now let's rearrange that. So you take x squared to the right. Four x squared minus x squared gives you three x squared. Plus 13 goes to the right, minus 13 x. And plus 30 goes to the right, minus 30. And that becomes equal to zero. So you've shown it. But the, write down the roots of the equation. If you put that in the calculator, that quadratic in the calculator, you can draw the graph and the roots are six and minus five over three. X equals to six and X equals five minus five over three. Or you just go and use the quadratic function in the calculator and solve it. You get the answer six and minus five over three. That's another way to do it. If we put minus x is minus 5 over 3 and solve that equation, we will have 2 plus 2 log minus 5 over 3. And when you try to find the log of minus 5 over 3, it gives a complex number with the i there. So you cannot find the log of a negative number. So x is minus five over three is not a solution. You cannot find the log of a negative number unless you start using complex number. So our answer is x equals to six because when you put six there and put six there and put six there, you get the left-hand side is 7.17 .17 and the right-hand side is 7.17. .17. That means the left side is equals to the right. You could check it with a calculator. The left side is equal to the right side. So that means your answer is correct. Question number four. They want us to state the value of A. We know that temperature is 85 degrees Celsius at time zero at the start, initially. Initially means the time is zero. So you put T is zero and put h is 85. So all of this will be e to the power zero, which is one. And you rearrange it, 85 minus 30, it gives you 55. So a is 55. We have that expression, we differentiate it. When you differentiate minus b, 
minus b t, you just get minus b. Put it in front. And that a in front stays the same. And you write e to the minus b t. So when you differentiate e to the minus b t, you get minus b e to the minus b t. You just differentiate that power there, put it in front, and then write it back. When you differentiate 30, you get zero. Now you put t, you put h is, you put 7.5 for the rate, the h over dt, and minus b times a is 55b e to the minus bt. So since time is zero, you multiply the e to the minus b times zero. So we arrange it to get b. B is 7.5 divided by minus 55, minus 0 0.136. So you can write your equation as 55 e to the, the minus and minus there will come a plus. Be careful with that. So that's the equation for h. Question number five. Question number five. Given that dy over dx is equals to that expression there, where k show that k equals to 12. dy over dx equals to zero at the turning point. So we put three, we replace x with three. So we place three there, three there, three there. And that should be equal to zero. Solve that, you go k equals to 12. Part B, hence find the coordinates of the point where C crosses the y axis. So let's first of all find the equation of the curve. We need to integrate. So the opposite of dy over dx will give you what y is. So integral of that, they could cancel each other. So we integrate that expression. When you integrate, you add one to the power and divide by the new power. So add one to three, it becomes four, and you divide by the four. So it's two x to the four. For differentiate, integrating this, you add one to the two, it becomes three, and you divide by three. Five x to the one, add one to that, it becomes two, and you divide by two. This is like 12 x to the zero. Add one to that, zero plus one is one, and you divide by one. And then you add the constant of integration, which we need to find out, what is this C? What number will it be? So we go back to the question, we know y is minus 10, x is three. We put y is minus 10, put x is three, and solve it, you will get the value for C, and C would be minus 28. So it crosses the y-axis when x is zero. If you put x is zero, you get zero minus 28. Question number six. So just imagine that's the shape there. We want to find AD. We always use the second one. AD is OD minus OA. Notice it's the second one minus the first. So you write down AD, which is OD minus OA in column form. 22 minus 12 is 10. 24 minus zero is 24. BC is the second one, OC minus OB. So 50 minus zero is 50. 136 minus 16 is 120. Now, if you compare those numbers of 10, 24, and 50, 120, if you times 10 times five, you get 50. 24 times 5, you get 120. So that means BC is 5 times AD. That means they are parallel. Another way to write it is to leave the I's and the J's and just subtract them. So AD is 10I plus 24J, and BC is 50I plus 120J. Factorize 5, because 50 is 10 times 5. 120 is 5 times 24. So five comes out, so it's 10i plus. So this 10i plus 24j is the same as that 10i plus 24j, which is the same as AD. So that means five times AD. AD is parallel to BC. That's the conclusion.
given that the particular runner takes exactly five minutes to complete two laps, two laps going around two times, and takes five minutes. Calculate the average speed of this runner, giving your answer in kilometers per hour. How do you calculate speed? Speed is distance divided by time. The way I remember it is sausages don't talk. So we need to find the total distance and the total time. So let's find what AB is. AB is OB, the second one minus the first OA. That gives you minus 12i plus 16j. And the distance for OAB, minus 12 squared, 16 squared, that gives you 20. So now we have got AB. I put it in red there. Let's use blue so that you can see. If I put it in blue there, AB. After that, we need to find BC. After that, we find CD. After that, we find AD. Add all of them. So BC is 50i plus 120j from part A, and the magnitude is 130. CD is the second one, OD minus OC. So the distance is 28 squared plus 112 squared. It gives you 28 root 17. After that, we we know DA is the same like AD. So we know AD 10i plus 24j, and that gives us 26. So the total distance for two laps, you add all of them, and you times by two because it's for two laps. And that gives us this answer there. And you change it to that, 176 plus 28 was 17 over 500. The time is for five minutes. Five minutes is five over 60 of an hour. But there's 60 minutes in one hour. It's five minutes. So that's one twelfth of an hour. So put the distance in kilometers in the numerator and the time in hours in the denominator. Your calculator will give you seven kilometers per hour, the nearest whole number. So this is a formula to find average speed formula total distance for total time and an example there. This is just for you to help you remember the, the method. Question number seven. We need to differentiate x cubed, which gives us three x squared. The second one, two x y, that's where the problem is. We will split it into two. The two x would be your u and the y will be your v. So you use put dog rule. So if u is 2x, du over dx is 2. If v is y, dv over dx is dy over dx. When you differentiate y, you get dy over dx. And then you put them together in the put dog rule. That's the formula there for put dog rule. So v is y, du over dx is 2. The plus goes there. u is 2x, dv over dx is dy over dx. Now we want to differentiate 3y squared. You differentiate it like normal. So with 3 times 2y, and then you add dy over dx. And then when you differentiate 47, you get 0. So this is the expression you will get. The 3 times 2 gives you 6. Now we want to put dy over dx on one side. So the 2x dy over dx stays on the left. The 6y dy over dx stays on the left. 3x squared goes to the right, it becomes minus 3x squared. 2y goes to the right, it becomes minus 2y. Now you factorize dy over dx comes out of the bracket, and you're left with 2x plus 6y. And that is times there. We need to make dy over dx the subject. So you take 2x plus 6y to the right-hand side and divide. And that's your answer for dy over dx. For part B, find the equation of the normal. The normal is a straight line, y equals mx plus c. So we need to find the gradient. We know that x is minus 2. So we put minus 2 in the, in the differential function and put y is 5. And it gives us the gradient of minus 11 over 13. And we want to find the gradient of the normal. 
So we do minus reciprocal of it, minus 11 over 13. That gives us positive 13 over 11. So gradient of the normal is 13 over 11. So that is M. We need to find C. Or we can just use this formula there. Put Y1 is 5. M is 13 over 11. X is minus 2 from there. So the minus and the minus becomes a plus. We multiply everything by 11. 11 times y, 11 times 5 to get this linear form and then remove the brackets there. And rearrange it, you get 13x minus 11y plus 81 equals to 0. Question number 8. We can write that Aru cos alpha theta, aru cos alpha plus aru sin theta sin alpha. We make them equivalent to two cos theta and eight sin theta. That means aru cos alpha, this aru and this cos alpha would be equal to two because the cos theta is the same. The sin theta is the same. So this arrow and sine alpha will be equals to eight. We want to solve those two equations. How did I get that first one? I expand this using that cosine compound angle formula. So to solve them, we do equation two divided by one. So the arrow will cancel. Sine divided by cos is tan. So the angle will be inverse tangent of for 1.326. You use the your calculator in radians. Another way is to memorize this formula at the corner I put in blue there. The A is the 2 and the B is the 8. So it's the square root of 2 squared plus A squared and the angle is inverse tangent of B over A. That's 8 over 2. That gives you the answer. Now you can do equation one squared plus equation two squared. You get this expression. Two squared plus eight squared gives you 64 plus four. And then you factorize arrow squared out of the bracket. Sine squared plus cos squared is one. So arrow squared is 68. Arrow is square root of 68, which is two root 17. So you will write the equation as arrow is two root 17 cos theta minus alpha, which alpha is minus is 1.326. That's the formula for sum of n terms. The first one is cos x. The difference is sine x. The number of terms is nine. So you can substitute it in the formula. n is nine. a is cos x. n is nine. Difference is sine x. When you simplify it, you get that expression. And if you differentiate it equals to zero at the maximum, you will get this answer there for x. Just to put some more explanation. Cos x is the first one. Cos x plus sine x is second. Cos x plus two sine x is the third. That's the fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine. So you can add it this way. You can use this formula, S9, sum of all the nine terms to add all of these nine things. You can put N, which is nine, the first one plus the last one. First one is cos X, last one is cos X plus eight sine X. Put them in there and then you will notice that in the middle there, two cos X plus eight sine X, that is what was given in part A. And you change it to that arrow cos theta minus alpha. So what you do now is that two cos x plus sine, eight sine x, because you change it to two root 17 cos alpha minus 1.326. So at the maximum, you want all of this to be one. That's the maximum value for cosine is one. So that means two with 17 times nine over two. The two will cancel and then you get nine with 17. 
This answer is 9 root 17. I'll put in the calculator here, if you plot that 9 cos x plus 36 sine x, you get that graph there. Use this view window to see it all, and then you get that 9 root 17, which will be given as decimals. So you can work that out just to check. And then it says, did you use the smallest possible value of x? So what happens is that 9 root 17 is equal to 9 root 17 cosine of that x minus 1.326. This will cross out, you get 1 there. So inverse cosine of 1 is x minus 1.326. Inverse cosine of 1 is 0. So we arrange it, x will be 1.326. Question number nine. We want to get the Cartesian equation. That means we want to eliminate the T. Cartesian equation only has Y and X. So we want to eliminate the T. So we can do two things. For the first part, we can complete the square. And that gives us X plus three all squared minus 25. Minus 25 goes to the left. So that means x plus 25 is equal to t plus 3 all squared. Now you go now in the next one, y equals to 6 lin t plus 3. You replace this t plus 3 with x plus 25. So you want to replace the t plus 3 all squared. But you get, so if you get the 2, 6 lin t plus 3, you can have, 6 is the same as 3 times 2. So it's 3, and then the 2 goes to the power to the front, 3 back lin t plus 3 squared. Now you replace t plus 3 squared, which you had at the top there, which is x plus 25. So that means y equals to 3 lin x plus 25. This one can be a bit tricky there, but it's doable. This is another way to do it. You write y equals to 6 lin t plus 3. You divide by 6. And then to get rid of the log, the lin, so it's e to the y over 6 equals to t plus 3. And then you come and complete the square for t squared plus 6t minus 16. When you complete the square, you get t plus 3 all squared minus 25. So that would be equals to x, and then the 25 goes to the other side, it becomes x plus 25. So wherever you see y, e to the y over t equals to t plus 3, you replace the t plus 3 with x plus 25. And then you put lean in front of them. So lean x plus 25, and the lean e will become 1. And 3 goes to that side, it becomes 3 lin x plus 25 equals to y, which is the same answer like before. For part B, you put x is 0, and you will get lin 0 plus 25, so you get 3 lin 25. And you can take the 25 to the front, 3 lin 25 cube which is lin 15625, or you can leave it as lin 25 cube. So dy over dx, how do we differentiate that? When you differentiate lin x, you get 1 over x. So when you differentiate lin x plus 25, you get 1 over x plus 25 times that 3. So it's 3 over x plus 25. But we want to find the gradient m, and now we know dy over dx. So we put x is 0, because they say x is 0. Put x is 0 in that expression you get the gradient to be 3 over 25. We use this equation of a line. We have to put in what m is 3 over 25. y1 is that 25 lin 25 cube, and x1 is 0. You put that, you get this expression for the equation of that line. And then you can rearrange it now. You multiply by 25. 5 by 25, they multiply by 25 there. You get this next expression. And then you put the x and the y in one side. 
to 3x, 3x minus 25y is equals to minus 75 lin y. Now you can rearrange it to get the equation the want. 25 is 5 squared. So the 2 comes to the front. 2 times 75 is 150. So it's minus 150 lin 5. So when you write this down, you will have your C is minus 150, B is minus 25, and A is 3. 1, 2, 3 there. That's the answers. Question number 10. So for number 10A, express f of x in partial fraction. That means you take one fraction and split it into two. Take one fraction, split it into two. Why into two? Because the denominator has one bracket x plus four and one x minus two. So when you separate them like that, you, you multiply by the same denominator, you get this linear expression. Now you want one of them to be zero. You want A to be zero. So you make this one to be two. The opposite of minus two is plus two. So two minus two will make that zero. So you put X is two. So you put X is two, X is two, and X is two there. This part for A will be zero. The part for B will become six B. This will be six K minus 18. So you divide by six and you'll get B to be K minus three. Now we want B to be zero. We put x to be minus 4. When x is minus 4, you get the left side to be minus 12k minus 18. The d part will be 0. This will be minus 6a. So you divide by minus 6, and that gives you a to be 18 divided by minus 6 is 3. Minus 18 by minus 6 is 3. Minus 12 divided by minus 6 is 2. So your answer is 2k plus 3 plus k minus 3. How do you check if that's correct? If this left side is equal to this 2, right? So we can put 1. The examiners use letters k and that because they don't want students to just use their calculator to find it out. But we can use the calculator to check because we are smarter than that. Let's put k to be 1. Um is 1 for French or uno in Spanish. So if we put k to be 1, the, the left side will be 3x minus 18 over x plus 4x minus 2. k is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. So it will be 5 over x plus 4. Put 1 there will be minus 1 minus 3 is minus 2, minus 2 over x minus 2. Let's plot the left graph and the two right graph and see if they meet exactly. So we've got the two graphs in the calculator. The left-hand graph, the other one, which is two of them. Let's see if they're exactly the same. So when you draw it, you will see the graph and you will see the other graph. They're exactly the same. So that means we did change it correctly. So that's the complete way to check it with your graph. And that's the working out for question 10. So you substitute x is 2, x is minus 4, and you get the two answers there. You split into partial fractions. Now we need to integrate. Why do we split into partial fraction? It makes it easier to integrate the two parts than to integrate one like that. So we have these two parts to integrate. So and the, it, it's, the limits are from minus three to one. So we want to integrate this and integrate the next part. So 2k plus three is just a number. Because k could be any number. So you take that out of the integral sign. So you're integrating one over x plus four. And k minus 1 is a number. You take it out of this sign. You're integrating 1 over x minus 2. And when you integrate 1 over x plus 4, you get lin x plus 4 with the absolute sign. And the 2k plus 3 
outside. And when you integrate one minus x minus two, you get lin x minus two, the three k minus three outside. Now we're going to substitute one for x, get the answer. Substitute three minus three for x, get the answer. Subtract them, make it equals to 21. And solve for k. That's the plan. So when we do that, you got 2k plus 3. Lean of 1 is 0. So that disappears. And k minus 3, lean, lean of minus will have some value 0. k minus 3, lean of 1 minus 5. You simplify 2k plus 3, lean 5, minus k minus 3, lean 5. So you take lean 5 out of the bracket. And then you subtract this 2k minus k is k. 3 plus 3 is 6. And that's equals to 21 over lean 5. So k is 21 over lean 5 minus 6. Question number 11. The volume is inversely proportional to the square root of height. And volume is change the proportional sign pool equals to k. It's equals to k times one over the square root of height. Volume is given by the length times the width times the height. 20 times 10 times h. 20 times 10 is 200, so volume is 200 h. This is a part that students find really tricky. So you have to be very careful when you do this first part to really understand how to rearrange them. Volume is length times width times height. When you differentiate volume, the rate of change of volume, what changes is the height. The height of water is changing with time. So we call it the h over dt. If the height is changing with time, the volume is changing with time. The length stays the same the width stays the same. So you write this expression, dv over dt equals to L times W dh over dt. So the height of water is changing or increasing as the time increases. As more water goes in, the height increases. L times W, we know that was 200. Length times W was 20 times 10 is 200. So we place that with 200. We know that dv over dt is proportional to one over root h. So change that proportional sign, put it equals to K. So this is the rate of change of volume with time, dV over dt. Now we want to replace dV over dt as you, we do not want it in the answer. So what do we replace it with? We replace it with 200 times the H over dt because dV over dt is the same. So we replace dV over dt and then we have the other side there, which is the h over dt. So now the v over dt is gone. We rearrange it. We want it to look like this, the h over dt. So we take 200 times 200 to the right. It becomes divided by 200. So the h over dt is k divided by 200 times 1 over root h. k is just a number. 200 is just a number. So we can call k over 200 another constant. Let's call it lambda. So the h over dt is equal to lambda over square root of h, which is what they wanted us to show. For part c, we put t equals to zero because it says initially. Initially, put time is zero at the start. 1.44 for h. So you substitute h is 1.44, t is zero. You solve it, you get B is 216 over 125. You put T is 8 minutes and H is 3.24. Do not change it to seconds because the question is in minutes. So you would get 3.24 to the power 3 over 2 equals 8A plus B. But we know what B is. B is 1.728. So substitute for B. So you substitute for B and then you rearrange it 3.24 to the power 3 over 2 minus that divided by 8, you get A. So A is 0.513. So you can write your equation as 
h to the 3 over 2, 0 0.513 times t plus b. Part C, find the time taken. We have that expression there. When it is full, the height will be 5 meters. When it is full, completely full, the height is 5 meters. So we put h is 5. So h is 5. And solve that equation to find time. So you, that will become 5 root 5 minus 1.728 divided by 0.513. It gives 18.43 minutes when it will be completely full. Question number 12. So we want to find the initial difference. Initial means put t equals to zero. When t is zero, you put it in the first equation. You solve it, you get seven. Put t equals to zero in the second one. You solve it, you get two. So the difference between them is the seven minus two is five. So your answer is five. For part B, the minimum would be when t minus 3 equals to 0. That gives t equals to 3. So the coordinates is 3, 4. If you look at this diagram for that, the minimum point there is 3, 4. For part C, we want to find the range where the left hand is bigger than the right. So we take the plus 4 to the right, 8 minus 4, it gives you 4. So we have the left side and the right side. We want to solve that. So we can start with positive. That's what that plus means. We start with the positive. So we will do t minus 3, and it will be positive t minus 3. And the 2t minus 6t with using the positive because when you get rid of the signs you make sure it's either positive or negative when we solve this inequality we will get t is greater than 13 over 3 when we do it for the negative we'll put minus there and there'll be minus there we move the bracket this will be minus t and then this will become plus 3 this minus and minus will make plus so we come plus 2t and then minus 6 Solve that inequality, you get t is less than 5 over 3. We change the sign because when you divide by minus, you reverse the sign. So t is less than 5 over 3, and t is greater than 13 over 3. How do you write it in set notation? You write the curly brackets, curly brackets, curly bracket. You write t such that, that 2 dot means such that t is less than 5 over 3. Union means and. So t is less than 5 over 3 and t such that t is greater than 13 over 3. On the graphics calculator, if you draw the two graphs, one of them is in red, one is in blue, you can see where they meet 5 over 3 and 13 over 3. And then you can see where the blue graph is above the red. In the beginning, up to where 5 over 3 is, the blue graph is above the red. On this other end, the blue graph is above the red. So you know it's bigger than 13 over 3 and less than 5 over 3. So that's how I put it in the calculator there. And you draw the, you draw the graph using that scale on the axis. And you can see where the blue one is big above the red. And when you use G solve in the calculator and you use intersect, you get that 1.666, which is one and two over three, which is the five over three. And you do the same, you get that part there, which is four and a third, which is 13 over three. Question number 13. It wants us to, to expand the first three terms. 
before we do binomial expansion of that, we have to arrange it in a way that we can expand it. So I've got a formula put down there for you to see. This is where we start in the yellow there. This is where we end. That's just to change it to this form before we start to expand. When you change it to that form, and then you can use this formula I'm circling there in red, and it's given in the formula book, but you have to remember how to change it before you get this formula and use it. So that's what we're going to do. So to change it, our A is three, the B is a number in front of X, which is one, and the N is minus two. So it would be A is three, N is minus two, one plus B is one, A is three, X, N to the minus, N is minus two. When you change it, you have that expression there. Now, what we need to do now is to expand it. And how do we go about doing that? We use this formula I've just ticked. So using that formula, we substitute for n and for x. So remember, we have this 3 to the minus 2, which is 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. That stays outside the expansion. We're going to multiply it at the end. So remember this 1 over 9. We're doing only what is inside the bracket. So with the formula, we will put one first. We'll put n is minus two. Our x is not just x, it's one over three x. Our x there is one over three x. We come to the next term, we put the plus, put the minus two, put the minus two for our n, the minus one, divided by two factorial. And the x is one over three x, and then we square it. So that gives us one, two, three terms. So we stop there. Now we simplify. One stays the same. The plus and the minus becomes a minus. It becomes two times three, two times one over three x, it becomes two x over three. For this next one, you put down your calculator, you get six over two times x squared over nine, which gives you x squared over three. So that's your three answers, the one, two, three. But we need to multiply by the 1 over 9, that 3 to the minus 2. We need to multiply it to all of them. So that 1 over 9 times 1, it gives you 1 over 9. 1 over 9 times 2 over 3 is 2 over 27. And 1 over 9 times 1 over 3, 1 over 27. So that's your answer for part A. Part B. We want to estimate the answer for that integral. Because we cannot integrate it, we have to use that expansion that we did. The expansion was three plus x to the minus two. We take this three plus x at the denominator, bring it to the numerator. So it goes from plus two to minus two. Now we had expanded this one. We put it there. So is that from the previous question? We write it down. We multiply it by 6x. 6x times 1 over 9 gives you 2 over 3x. 6x times 2 over 27, 4 over 9. 6 times 1 over 27, 2 over 9. Now we integrate. When you integrate it and put in the values of 4, you will get an answer of 0 0.03304 which is the same as if you put it in the calculator. If you put that in the calculator, it gives you that answer. So you integrate, put the value 0 0.4 and 0 0.2, and you get the same answer. For part C, we want to give in your, it says giving your answer in the form A lin B plus C, where A, B, and C are constants. So six comes out of the bracket, six comes out of the integral sign, and we so use substitution. Let the denominator x plus 3 plus x be u. So du over dx is 1. Differentiate 3 is 0. Differentiate x, you get 1. Now, if we rearrange this, x would be u minus 3. 
That's very important for that part. And our du, take the x to that side. Our du is equal to our dx. So we need to replace the x. We need to replace 3 plus x. We need to replace this x. And then from there now, we can start to integrate. So after that, we need to change the limits. So u is 3 plus x. So when x is 0 0.2, u is 3.02, which is 3.2. When x is 0 0.4, u is 3 plus 0 0.4, which is 3.4. So we change the limit 3.4 and 3.2. And when you want to integrate, you can separate them u over u squared minus 3 over u squared. One of the u cancel is 1 over u minus 3 u to the minus 2. You integrate that and you get that expression. And when you substitute 3.4, and 3.2, you'll get that answer then. Question number 14. We want to change the tangent. We use sine over cos. We want to change the sine squared. We use one minus cos squared. We want to use the tan squared. We write it as one plus tan squared is sec squared and it is one over cos squared. So after we change the tan to sine over cos, we remove the bracket and we'll get this expression there, which is equals to eight sine two theta plus one plus. We change the one plus tan squared to one over cos squared, which is the same as sec squared. So use that on the side to help you Tan squared plus one is one of our cos squared. To get rid of the cos squared on the denominator, we multiply the first one with cos squared, multiply the second one with cos squared, multiply the third one with cos squared. So the cos squared will cancel on the third one. One of them will cancel on the second one and you get this new expression. And what you want to do now is to start to simplify and factorize. We replace the sine squared with one minus cos squared. Very important. We replace the sine squared with one minus cos squared. So, and you need to know that sine two theta is the same as two sine theta cos theta. You need to memorize that. We're going to use that. So we have eight times sine two theta cos theta plus 23. You remove the bracket 23 sine two theta times one and 23 times that 23 sine two theta times cos squared theta minus eight sine two theta equal to zero. Now, if you notice this, there's sine two theta on the first one, sine two theta on the second, sine two theta on the third and sine two theta on the fourth. So sine two theta comes out of the bracket and you left with that in the middle. Now, 23 minus one is 22. So you end up with sine two theta is equals to minus 23, which is your A, cos squared theta, the plus, your B is eight, and then there's a cos theta and the plus, and your C is 22. For part B, it says hence. Hence means use the answer from part A. You can try by putting this in your calculator to work out the answers between that range, 360 and 450, and 540. But let's do it using that hence. So the answer from before, that's what we had from before. But we're using X instead of theta, we replace it with X, 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 X. So either sine 2x equals to zero. So 2x is inverse sine of zero. So 2x is zero, 180, 365, 40. That's where it is zero. Zero, 180, 40. But they want the answer only between 360 and 540. 360 and 540. So put 2x equals to 360, x is 180. 2x equals to 540, x is 270. 
and we have this quadratic equals to zero, we can call cos x to be x. Solve this quadratic in your calculator, you get x to be 1.1672. Cos x, inverse cosine of that, there's no solution. And then you get cos x equals to minus 0 0.819. Inverse cosine gives you 144.98. But the answer has to be above 360. So 360 plus, so it's 144.98 plus 360 gives you 504.98. If you put that graph cos x and minus 0 0.819 in the calculator, you see where they meet, you will see one of the answers is the 144, and the next one is a 504 by putting cos x and y equals to minus 0 0.819. So the calculator gives you the answer as well. Question number 15. Okay, just a reminder, acute angles are angles less than 90 degrees. Right angle is a 90 degrees. Obtuse are bigger than 90, but less than 180. So we have here cos squared. Cos sine x minus cos x all squared is less than 1. So you provide them, expand that, and you will get this expression here. But what you notice is that sine squared plus cos squared is equals to one. So it's one minus two sine x plus x is less than one, which the one and the one will cancel to zero. So minus two sine x plus x is less than zero. You divide by minus two and you switch the sign. So sine x plus x is greater than zero. And x is obtuse angle. That means x is between 90 and 180. So x is in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, sine is positive and cosine is negative. So in the second quadrant, sine is positive and cosine is negative. So positive times negative gives you a negative, which is a contradiction from the above statement. Our assumption in x minus cos x should be less than one is wrong. Sine positive minus cos x negative. So that's what it gives us when x is an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle means sine is positive and when x is negative. Sine is positive, cosine is negative. 